you know, when you talk about fixing a problem, you have to find a starting point. The property damage in Baltimore got a lot of attention, far more than the police murder of a young man whose fatal mistake seems to have, that brought him into contact with the police seems to have been that he made eye contact. The obvious question to answer to the question of how do we stop property damage and restore order would seem to be stop killing young people. On the other hand, however, if we've ever seen the wire, we know that Baltimore's problem did not start with the police killing of Freddie Gray. We have to go back to police and National Guard responding to the protests following the murder of Martin Luther King, to the rapid deindustrialization of this port city of Baltimore. We have to go even further back to the Jim Crow past that followed the kidnapping, breeding, and sale of black bodies after the murder and theft of the original inhabitants of this land. To solve a problem, we'd have to go back if we want to truly understand the world that we live in and how we got to be in this world and what we can do to fix it. This is indeed a story of criminal behavior. But when we go back far enough, it's not just petty criminal behavior of young people left idle by a failed education system and a failed economy. It is also the major crimes against humanity that created our system with its lack of opportunity and growing inequality. To fix a problem, you need to find the right starting point. To get out of this mess, we have to build a new economy that is predicated on the inherent value, dignity, and productive potential of people. The basis of this new economy must be people's capacity to creatively meet their own human needs and constantly elevate the quality of life and community when the surplus that they produce remains in their community rather than being extracted and accumulated by forces who hold their community in complete yeah. contempt and who only view people as instruments for producing and maximizing profit. This new economy would be built on principles of democratic ownership and democratic control of economic enterprises leading to the democratization of the wealth in our communities, putting it that wealth at the disposal of by and for the people. The new economy is built, is being built now as a cooperative economy based on the values of cooperation, valuing self-reliance and transparency, based on principles of openness and inclusion, democracy, economic participation, autonomy, ongoing education, mutual support, cooperation between cooperatives, and support for the community. Mondragon sets an international example of this type of cooperative economy, along with the Emilio-Romagna region in Italy, the solidarity cooperatives that are emerging in Quebec, Canada, the robust cooperatives in Puerto Rico, where there's even a movement to build cooperatives within the prison system so that young people can get a real start on life and coming back and not going back into prison. There is an inspiring, all of this is inspiring the cooperative movement that's developing here in the United States. One Worker, One Vote, the U.S. Federation of Worker Cooperatives and the Democracy at Work Institute, Federation of Southern Cooperatives are all part of this movement. In order to fix the problem, we have to find the right starting point. Right now, we in the Southern Grassroots Economies Project are working to build this new economy, building the Southern Reparations Loan Fund to help with the financing of grassroots democratic enterprises that are rooted in community, owned collectively by the community, controlled democratically by the community, and where the profits of successful enterprises remain in the community to further expand the community's ability to meet its own needs. All of this based on a principle of radical inclusivity. When communities fail, when the market fails within communities to meet the needs of people, often local government will step in in the role of incentives trying to help uh, individual entrepreneurs guarantee their profitability in order to hope that some social benefit trickles down. One of the things we try to do here in Greensboro, North Carolina, is to reverse that process and call on the local government to participate in helping an organized group of people in the community directly solve a problem of a food desert they have. With the building of the Renaissance co uh, Community Cooperative that is being built as a grocery store in an area where the last grocery store closed down in 1998. Uh, I can explain some more about this later as we talk some more. We think it's an important effort that needs to grow across the country 
that this approach of helping communities to help themselves through cooperative development of economics that is democratically owned and democratically controlled is the basis for an incredible transformation and shift in ownership that will ultimately make a lot of difference in places like Baltimore and all across the country. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ed. Thank you, Ed.